I'm gonna make sure that that button's on. Got y'all. That's all right. Push this. Have you guys been blessed today? Amen. Oh, okay. you turn myself on. You guys been blessed today? Are we on? Oh, who's? There we go. Oh my goodness, I have just been so touched by God today, and I just believe it's just a just a seed for what God wants to do in this next year for all of us. I really believe He wants to usher in a new season in our lives, a new season where we have feel the impact of His presence in our daily life, not just on Sundays, not just on Wednesdays, not just on special days, but day to day, in our homes, in our jobs, in the shops, right? Where we feel God's presence. And I really believe that God has awesome things planned for this next year, and I am super excited about it. I know I say that a lot, but I'm just, I'm telling you that there is something in my spirit that has been stirring and stirring in my heart about this, and um, I thought about, when you talk about Mondays, I thought about last year, Stephen had an insight after we, we, we in our New Year's, just prior year, New Year's service last year, and um, we talked about how New Year's is a new beginning, right? And Stephen talked to me, I don't know how long it was, but a little while after that, he came to me, he's like, you know what, that's like changed my life, because I realized that if the new year is a new beginning, so is every Monday. And I might be Amen. messing up the way he said it, but that Amen. was the, the, I'm paraphrasing mightily, but, because it's been a year, right? But he was impacted, he's like, look, if new years is a new opportunity, God gives me a new chance every Monday. And I can start my work, I can start my life, even if I blew the last week, I have another opportunity again and again and again. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. So our Mondays should be different, right? As we celebrate this new year, let's leave behind whatever this was, good or bad, it doesn't matter. I mean, it matters to God, right? But as we go forward, what matters is that we move forward with Jesus, right? We leave behind this last year, and we look forward to what God is going to do in our lives this coming year. Amen? Next slide for me, honey. All right, so those of you that wear glasses, but that's kind of what my vision looks like without my contacts. <laughs> blobs of light, right? Anybody ever had blurry vision, right? Ever before, like, you either got your eyes tested or you need glasses or something? And it's just blurry, right? We can't see, right? Anybody see that, right? And what do we need to do when our eyes are like that? We gotta go to the doctor, right? We gotta get glasses so that we can see 2020. Right? We want 2020 vision. Right? And I, I gotta tell you that, you know, so I, I thought I was bad when I couldn't see far away. Right? I remember I, I went to some place, actually it was the worst races. Shh, I can't say that in church. <laughs> and I couldn't read the signs. And my parents were like, you can't read that? And I'm like, no. And then, um, so I ended up getting glasses. And I went out, actually, yeah, glasses, and I went out, and then I, I went out, and I could see the trees, and they had, like, leaves. <laughs> they were fuzzy, right? And all of a sudden, everything got clear, right? But then, I got a little older, right? Younger, right? I'm still 19. Still 19. But I got a little older. At least my eyes thought we did. And so, not only do I can't see far, all of a sudden, I can't see close. And now I need these, right? Do you know how irritating that is? <laughs> and I'm always losing. If you guys see them around the church, they're mine. Just leave them there. I've left them so that if I lose one, I find them somewhere. Okay? They're everywhere where I might need my glasses. <laughs> All right? But then you know something else I noticed? That I'm driving my car and then I was having a hard time seeing the middle range, like I could see outside and I could see up close, but I couldn't see my GPS. That's a problem. <laughs> I had to go to the doctor, get my eyes, my prescription adjusted. But I want to tell us that a lot of us, that's how we see life, spiritually, not just physically, right? And sometimes we go through life and we just, we're not seeing things clearly. We're not seeing things the way that they should. And we're confused and we're like, what's going on? Are those people? Are those lights? What is that? And we walk through life blurry. 
wondering what we're supposed to be doing. We're stumbling around. It's like, if you can't see, you know, you're going to trip over stuff, right? You're going to fall down. You're going to take the wrong turn. You're going to go stuff. And I believe that God is speaking to us this year. He says, I want you to see 2020. Amen. Amen? I want you to see 2020. Next one. And I have to, you know the saying, there's hindsight is 2020. That's when we think, well, we see things in the past, right? But I want you to know that God says, no, this year, I don't want it to be hindsight 2020. I want it to be future, forward, forward 2020. Amen. He wants to give us 2020 vision as we start off this year so that we are not walking around blurry, stumbling around, wondering what we're doing, confused, lost, discouraged, right? But I want to also remind you that 2020 is seeing things God's way. We have to let go of the way we see things because I got to tell you, compared to God, we all see blurry. He's got a different perspective on life, which is one of the reasons we're called new perspective, because we want to get God's perspective. And oftentimes that is a new perspective for us. Amen. Because we are so set in our ways, and we've grown up a certain way, and we see things, and we view things the way that we've always viewed them. And God's saying, stop. I want to give you my vision. And as we talked about, is Jesus sick? Right? No. Does Jesus see clearly? Does he need glasses? No. Right? Does he know the future? Yes. Right? Does he have good plans for you? Yes. Can he see things that you can't? Yes. And that is what I believe that God wants to do for you this year. He wants to give you his sight, his eyes, his vision. Amen? Amen. Next one. And like I told you, see all these bushes? That was my life sight, right? And it was all fuzzy and foggy and you can't tell what anything is but you put those glasses on and all of a sudden everything comes into clear focus right clear clear focus and that is what God wants to do in us this year he wants to give us clear focus of what he's doing and next one and I think Taylor mentioned this earlier believe the invisible not the visible Right? Even when things look a mess around you, when it doesn't look like things are lining up, remember that your eyes are not trustworthy. We need God's vision, not ours. Right? And his vision is not the same as ours. And when it looks like nothing's happening, I promise you that God is working in the background. There's a, there was a book that I read by a four-square pastor. It was, God works the night shift. When things are the darkest in your life, that is when God is working the hardest on your behalf. Do not lose hope. Do not trust your eyes. My father was a pilot, and he had to learn to not trust his eyes and to not trust his vision, but to trust the instruments. Amen. Amen? Amen. And he says, pilots that didn't crash the plane. And I am telling you right now that if we do not keep our, if we do not have God's vision, right? If we don't put on God's glasses, if we don't see things the way he sees them, we're going to crash. Just like that pilot in the plane. But God wants to prevent that. He's not a God of crashes. He's a God of rescuing, right? And he wants to give us a vision. Next one. And I also want to remind you that God moves in seasons. It's kind of funny, sometimes it shifts to things, but have you noticed that life kind of ebbs and flows? We've got um, winter and spring and summer and fall, and those things happen in our life too. Right? And it's, it's kind of interesting, God kind of does that, and I think that he uses things too to kind of speak to our hearts and our minds. He uses whatever he can. And I think as we look at this new year, oftentimes it's a time of reflection, right? And a time of planning and going forward. We start thinking, even naturally speaking in the realm, even in our society, without God, what do we do? We make resolutions, right? Because we're starting to look forward. But I believe that God wants to do something supernaturally, not just on the natural, but he wants to supernaturally prepare us and get our eyesight fixed on him so that we can go forward with what he wants. Next one. So 2020, and I looked it up, the number 20 in the Bible biblically, you know it can mean redemption and completeness. Redemption and completeness. Anybody need redemption and completeness in their life? Amen. Amen. I get this one. I, this, I, I got chills when I said this. It can also be connected to being rewarded after a period of waiting or trial or suffering. Anybody been through a period of waiting? Yeah. 
Anybody been through a trial? Anybody been suffering? And I'm telling you that 2020 is a symbol of redemption and completion and being rewarded for standing firm and getting through. Because look, if you made it through to the other side, you survived, right? You're a conqueror. And God is with you. You only made it because of God. So give God the credit. Right? But I believe that that is exactly what God wants to do in our lives this year. He wants to bring completeness where there has been brokenness. He wants to bring redemption where there's been destruction. He wants to restore what the enemy has tried to steal from your lives. And he also wants to reward us for all those years, all those days, all those weeks of mourning and crying. He wants to reward us and bless us. Because God is a good God, and he did not bring those things in our life. He is a good God. Do we receive his completeness and his redemption today? Let's go to the next slide. Isaiah 54, 1 through 6. I think this is honestly a scripture for us. It's a spread out, think big. You like that? Hallelujah. Spread out, think big. Right? Sing, barren woman who has never had a baby. Fill the air with song, you who've never experienced childbirth. You're ending up with far more children than all those childbearing women. God says so. Hallelujah. You hear that? God says so. Now, obviously he's also speaking naturally to the women and, and those are, that is a truth, but also I believe that there's many of us too that we've labored and not given birth to the things of God in our life. We've labored and not given birth to those desires, to those, those plans, those goals that we believe that God has placed there. And God is saying, now's the time of fruitfulness. Now is the time. All right? Clear lots of ground for your tents. You get that? Lots of ground for your tents. Make your tents large. Hallelujah. All right? Spread out. Think big. I like it. Use plenty of rope. It's going to tie it down because it's going to be big. Drive the tent pegs deep. Let me tell you, in that period of waiting, God didn't send it, right? But that period of waiting, those tent pegs, drive them deep. Because in that period of waiting, there's going to be birthed greater things than you can ever imagine. A little mustard seed planted in the ground becomes a big tree. And in the times of desolation in our life, those seeds that are being planted by God will bring forth fruit, so don't despair. Drive your tent pegs deep into the ground. Anchor them in Jesus so that it will not be swayed, so it will not fall. You're going to need lots of elbow room for your growing family, right? So you guys look around. You're going to need lots of elbow room in here. We need to spread out as a church because God is filling this place. Because he has called people in Irving, people in Dallas, people in Plano, people in Arlington, people in Ulysses, and people everywhere. Fort Worth, what else we got out there, right? He's calling people here to be part of this body as we journey together to know him more. And then to spread that love and that good news throughout. Amen? You're going to take over whole nations. You're going to resettle abandoned cities. That means we're going to go into the nations, guys. We're going out into the world with the good news of Jesus. Next. Don't be afraid. You're not going to be embarrassed. Don't hold back. You're not going to come up short. Amen. You hear that? Don't be afraid. You're not going to be embarrassed. Don't Hold back. You're not going to come up short. So as we go forth in this new year, do not hold back. Do not be afraid. Despite what last year held, go forth with boldness in what God has called you to do. Dig your tents, take deep, spread out your wings, and fly like God meant you to. Right? Do not hold back. You'll forget all about the humiliations of your youth, and the indignities of being a widow will fade from memory. 
And I'm telling you that if you trust in Jesus, if you allow him to work in your life, to heal those broken places in your heart and in your minds, and to restore you, I am telling you that all of those humiliations, all those embarrassments, all those indignities, all of those things, that those tragedies in your past, he is going to put those out of your memory. Right? And he's going to bring restoration and completeness and redemption. Amen. And it will be forgotten. And it will just be a testimony for all that God has done in your life. For your maker is your bridegroom. His name, God of the angel armies. So here's what I'm going to tell you about. He's our bridegroom. Anybody need a spouse? You need a spouse? God's your spouse. Male, female, I don't care. God's your spouse. All right? But he's also God of the angel armies. You know, if you need somebody to bridge battle for you, God is there. Anybody needs a battle warrior? God is on your side. Amen. Amen? Your Redeemer is the Holy of Israel. He redeems us from all that sin, all that muck, all those wrong things. He has redeemed us, and He is the Holy One. And He has taken our place as that Holy One so that we might be holy because of His blood. Amen. Known as God of the whole earth. God of the whole earth. It does not matter what faces you. God is God, and He is sovereign, and He is big, and He is huge, and He is bigger than anything that is coming against you right now. You were like an abandoned wife, devastated with grief, and God welcomed you back. Like a woman married young and then left, says your God. Anybody felt abandoned? Anybody had grief? God wants to restore. He wants to bring you back. He wants to bring back joy and peace in your life. I am telling you, I've been through many trials and tribulations and sorrows in my life, but God has brought me through. Amen. God has brought me through. Okay? God will bring you through. You don't have to be some fantastic person. You don't have to be holy. You don't have to earn it. All you do is you trust in Jesus. You hang on to his hand. You keep your eyes fixed on his. And he will lead you through to the promised land on the other side. Amen? Amen? Do not be afraid. I do believe there's people that are afraid. It's been a troublesome year. You've got some worries for the year ahead. Sometimes that change is hard. But I'm telling you, do not be afraid. Because whatever comes, good or bad, God is with you. And he will uphold you. He will strengthen you. He will get you through. All right, next one. And I believe this is the word for us of the church, and I'm just repeating it, but at this particular spot. Clear lots of ground for your tents. Make your tents large. Spread out. Think big. Use plenty of rope. Drive the tent pigs deep. You're going to need lots of elbow room for your growing family. And that's from Isaiah 54. But clear lots of ground for your tent. I believe that's for the church itself, right? Drive those tent pegs deep, spread out, prepare for growth, right? Amen. Let's prepare for growth. Amen. Let's be ready for the okay. church. Did you hear me? Prepare for growth. It didn't say wait till it comes and then spread out your tents. It says spread them out now. Yes. Amen. Amen. We think big now. Hallelujah. And God wants us to think big for the church. Now watch this, and for you. Hallelujah, yeah. For your life. So yes. while I think this is for the church, I also believe this is a word for each and every one of you. And God is saying to you this year, spread out and think big. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. Spread out and think big. Make plenty of room. Make your tents large. Be prepared. Prepare yourself for the growth that's going to happen in your life. Prepare yourself for all that God is going to do. Prepare yourself for the miracles that God wants to work in your life and in the lives of those around you. Prepare yourself. Amen. Drive your tent pegs deep so there is a foundation locked into Jesus that cannot be swayed no matter the earthquakes that come. Hallelujah. All right? We're going to need lots of room. Next slide. Just to drive my point home, I'm going to go to another version, right? That was, <laughs> this is the Passion Translation, right? Now, the Passion Translation seeks to get to your heart, so let's list this into your very heart and soul. 
Let it go deep into your heart, right? Increase is coming. Amen. Can I hear the hallelujah? Yeah. Increase is coming. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? So enlarge your tent. Amen. Yeah. Increase is coming. Hallelujah. Enlarge your tent. If you have been living with a mindset of lack, get rid of it. Amen. Enlarge your tent. Increase is coming. Think big. I like it. And add extensions to your dwelling. Amen. It's not just getting big. It's like extensions and extensions and extensions and extensions and extensions. Y'all get ready and add extensions to your dwelling. Where you live. Where you live. Not just at church on Sundays. Where you live. Hold nothing back. Make the tent ropes longer and the pegs stronger. I like it. Hold nothing back. Let's be a people that holds nothing back this year. Somebody asked me, I think it was last night, they said, if you could do anything different going back, you know, what would you relive over? I'm like, oh, back up. First of all, I wouldn't relive anything. Thanks very much. <laughs> Went through it once. Don't need to do it again. <laughs> but my answer was two things. One, I would have had a little bit more fun. Kind of a serious person, my mom will tell you. And two, I wouldn't have held back. I wouldn't have tried to please so many people, and I would have done what God had called me to do earlier. Amen. Amen. Now, don't worry, I've sought to please God all my life. Don't get me wrong. But you know those thoughts and those sayings from people? Their beliefs that wrap, that, that wrap around you and tie you down? I would have cut those ropes. Right? Hold nothing back. Don't let yourself, don't let somebody else, don't let your circumstances, don't let the world hold you back from all that God has for you. Let loose. Stop worrying. Don't be afraid. Step out in what God has for you. Don't be afraid because He will lift you up. Even if we make a misstep, which is one of my issues, I was like, what if I mess up? God's grace is big enough to pick us back up. If he knows we're trying to follow him, he's going to reroute us if we get off track. So don't worry about that. Step out with boldness and God will direct you. Make the tents longer and the pegs stronger. Again, I cannot emphasize this in this. That's why we want to do discipleship because we want to get our tents so deep that they cannot be yanked out by anything that comes against us in this life. Amen. Our faith needs to be deep, deep, deep rooted so that it will bring fruit in our lives. All right? And the tent ropes longer because we got more to hold, right? Because God, the more that God we receive from God, guess what? The more he's going to give and the more he's going to give. And the more we're open to receiving, God's got more and more and more. And just when you think you've filled enough, he's going to overflow you even more. So stretch out those things and get ready because God wants to enlarge our tents. You will increase and spread out in every direction. Hallelujah. Increase and spread out in every direction. Amen. Spiritually, yes. physically, yes. mentally, yes. emotionally, yes. socially, yes. business-wise, yes. job-wise, yes. income-wise, health-wise. Yes. Whatever you can think of wants to increase and spread out in every direction. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Spread out in every direction. I love it. And you will increase. And I am telling you that as God's word to us, he wants to increase. We must decrease so that he must increase. Amen. Amen. Let God increase in your life. And as you let God increase in your life, he will naturally flow from you. And it won't even be an effort. Next slide. Just to really drive it home, right? Anyway, right? <laughs> the New Living Translation. Enlarge your house. Build an addition. We are a people. We are a family. We are the family of God. This is our family. And God wants us to build and increase our family and to build an addition because he wants more families, Amen. right? And more family. And he wants little families of connect groups all over this DFW Metroplex. Woo! And he wants us to build additions and to build relationships with people and disciple people. About somebody discipling you, you discipling somebody else because we got to build that addition. we got to spread out. Because that is the only way to make a difference in this world. Amen. We complain and we mutter and we're, we, we freak out and we get scared because we see all these things going on in our, 
in the world and we think, what are we going to do? And we have forgotten that we have a God of increase. Hallelujah. He's the God of light and where darkness encroaches, light scatters it. Amen. And if we become the light of Christ in our life and in our homes and in our buildings and our neighborhoods and where we shop and where we work and all of those things, that light will push out that darkness that keeps encroaching on us. That is our only hope. If we retreat and we hold back and we hide in our little homes and we stay away from the evil things, guess what? The darkness gets darker and darker and creeps more and more. We need to be people of the light, guys. Amen. People of the light, so filled with the light of God that as we walk into a room, our faces will shine. Hallelujah. And people will notice and they'll say, hey, there's something different about you. Hallelujah. Amen? Yes. I had somebody ask me the other day, why are you always so happy? <laughs> I said, Jesus. Amen. And they said, oh, that makes sense. Hallelujah. Oh, that makes sense. Now, I know you're thinking, okay, yeah, but you're a pastor. So, yeah, uh, ask my mother. <laughs> Am I naturally a joyful person? <laughs> I'm not. You go to my house, you're going to find a lot of Eeyores. <laughs> okay. Good morning. If it is a good morning, okay. <laughs> that, hold on. But I'm just saying, <laughs> my mom won't let me be your anymore. She's got to be Tigger. He's so bouncy and irritating. <laughs> but because my natural spirit, my natural man, my flesh, right, is not joyful. It's not fun loving. I went on a merry-go-round. My mom was telling the story at Christmas. And I was going around and around. And I was like, oh my goodness, we need to stop the ride. She looks miserable. And I got off and I said, like, can I go again? And they're like, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm not naturally joyful. So for somebody to point that out, wow. are you getting it? God is at work. Amen. God is working. And trust me, if you doubt me, ask my mom, ask my husband, right? Ask them. If he can do it in this miserable little Eeyore's life, he can do it in yours. Amen. Some of y'all have a naturally more sunny disposition than I ever had. <laughs> right? Flesh, critical. Depressed. Gloomy. <laughs> Always... Glass half full, right? That's my natural state. But by God's grace, he is changing me. He is working in me. He is delivering me. And I am becoming more and more joyful, more and more like Tigger, despite his irritations. Because God is moving and changing me. And he wants to do the same for you. Spread out your home and spare no expense. Spare no expense as we go out. Spare no expense. Put your money where your mouth is. Invest in the things of God. Yes. Invest in the things of God. You cannot outgive God and He will give back to you. Amen. Right? Here's the other thing. Spare no expense. Give it all you got. Give it all you got. Throw yourself head first. Spare no expense in your life. Don't hold back in your spirit. Don't hold back and go, ah, maybe I'll try it. Uh-uh. Throw yourself in. Spare no expense. For you will soon be bursting at the seams. I want to see popping all over this house of God, right? I want to see popping all over your houses. I want to see bursting at the seams everywhere we go. That when we walk into a store, that things just start happening. Hallelujah. Amen? That when we visit a store, that they're automatically blessed because we walked into it, and all of a sudden they're finding out, oh my goodness, my revenue's increased. Why? Because the people of God entered in. Amen. I want it to be where the city recognizes. Not because of us, not because of recognition, but that, that they sense the spirit so strongly here that they don't want to imagine a city without a people of God. Hallelujah. And I don't think it's just for us, right? I believe that should be the case for every church. Yeah. But I believe that God has placed us here strategically. 
And that is what God wants us to do. We want to be a force in Irving. We're not here just to come play church and leave and go. Amen. We are here to get our lives transformed. Hallelujah. And to help transform the lives of the hurting that surround this area and tribes and places. Because guess what? God loves every person, no matter their ethnicity, their culture, their color, their gender, whatever. God wants to reach people, and he wants to use us to do it. And by the way, he'll get more into that next week, but he wants to use y'all. Yes. He wants to use y'all. All y'all. All y'all. <laughs> right? All y'all. He wants you to use you guys. Right? Whatever language you speak out there, he wants to speak. He wants to use you. Our job is to equip you to do the work of the ministry. To be a minister. And to be a minister. We're not the ministers, although we are. Y'all are the ministers. Amen. 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 Next. So in 1 Chronicles 4.9, there's a man named Jabez. And this is, really, this is all you hear about him. This is, oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Amen. Okay, did you see that? He's basically, he's just praying that scripture, right? Enlarge my territory, enlarge my tents, right? That your hand would be with me, it would keep me from evil, so it keeps us on the right path, right? And that it may not cause pains. We want to cause good and not hurt in this world, amen? amen? Far too often we cause hurt instead of goodness. God wants to reverse that. But I love this part. So God granted him what he requested. This is a prayer that God will answer. So can we pray this as a church? Actually, I want everybody, everybody right where you're at, close your eyes and hold out your hands like you're going to receive from God. Don't look at anybody else, but I'm going to pray this. Oh Lord, that you would bless new perspective indeed and enlarge our territory, that your hand would be with us and that you would keep us from evil, that we may not cause pain. And oh Lord, that you would bless me me, that you would enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. And we can say together, so God granted us what we requested. So God granted us what we requested. And I'm going to thank God right now that God has already... Yeah. Amen. Let's thank God ahead of time. Thank you, Lord. Before He's done it, let's look at the things that are not seen instead of the things that are seen. Let's see with God's eyes and not our eyes. Amen. Next one. I want us to enter this new year not with a new resolution, but a new focus. Amen. We make resolutions every year and we break them the second Sunday, right? We might not even last a week. Well, let's, let's forget the resolutions. If you want to make them fun, that's all to you and God. But what I want us to do as a church is let's make a new focus. Let's put our focus on Jesus where it belongs. We put our focus on so many outward things. When God says, put your focus on me, he's got everything else, people. Put your focus on Jesus, and that will transform your next year. I'm telling you, year after year, we put the focus on ourselves and what we're going to do. And the problem is we fall flat on our faces because it's not about us, it's about Jesus. Put our focus on Jesus and we will naturally do the things that he wants us to do. Next one. Isaiah 41.10, Passion to listen. Do not yield to fear, for I am always near. Hear that? God's always near us, no matter what's happening in your life, no matter what surrounds you, no matter what's attacking you. Never turn your gaze from me, for I am your faithful God. And I bolded gaze, because what? Focus. Gaze. We put our focus, we put our gaze on Jesus, because he is faithful, right? Amen. And he is always near. That's what we do. And what does he say he's going to do? He says, I 
will infuse you with my strength. I will infuse you with my strength and help you in every situation. Did it say some? No. Did it say a few? No. It said every situation he will help you. And I love this. This gives me chills. I will hold you firmly with my victorious right hand. God is a conqueror. He's going to lead you through. When you are going to lose that battle, he's going to pick you up and he is the victorious one. He will hold you in that hand. Do not let go. Hallelujah. Right? God is not letting go of you. Do not let go of him. Keep your eyes focused on him. Peter was walking on water with boldness as long as his eyes were fixed on Jesus. He sank only when he took his eyes off Jesus. And the same is for us. Keep your eyes and your gaze focused on Jesus, and he will lead us through. Next one. Thank you, Lord. And as we do that, let him do that work. Let him transform you, because he wants to transform us from the inside out, not from the outside in. Let him guide you. I think, was it you that said we should pray? I think it was you. I forgot who said this morning, but somebody said this. It's like, have you prayed? <laughs> Have you prayed? How many things in this life do we do without praying? We forget to ask God. We just think it seems good to us. It might even be a good thing, but maybe God has a great thing. Let's not forget to ask him that he will guide us. Let him restore you. Let him in. I know those hard places, those hurting places, we don't want anybody to see, we don't want anybody to know, and we want to even hide it from God, but I am telling you that God wants to touch those deepest places in your heart. He wants to wipe away those tears that no one but you and God knows that you have. That you cry in the depths of night that no one else sees. That he wants to bring healing to your life. Let him in. Let him grow you, right? We don't want to just, it's, God loves babies, right? Mm -hmm. He loves us whatever stage you're at. He loves you right where you're at, no matter what you do. And if you never did another thing for you, for him, sorry, he will still love you because our God is good. But his desire isn't just to leave us there, as we sang this morning. His desire is to grow us up, right? He wants us to grow in the things of him so that he can see us prosper in all things. Right? So let's let him grow you. Let him in. Let him change those things in your life. Let him grow you. And sometimes change and growth is hard. But God will sustain you through it. I like this one too. Right? Let him give you new perspectives. Yeah. <laughs> let him give you new perspectives. I am telling you, I don't care how old we are in the Lord. We always need a new perspective because we get somewhere our vision is blurry. Remember that first picture where it's all blurry? We need God's glasses. We need God's glasses for every circumstance in our life. Those areas that we've forgotten about. We've all grown. Look, I'm telling you, we've got people that we just need glasses everywhere, right? And there's some that, you know, they've got a lot of these things all right. But guess what? There's still areas where we need those God's glasses, right? And let me just give you a hint. If you're back... And you feel like, oh my goodness, I just need, I need like super strength glasses. I'm just a mess. Like there's just nothing. What am I going to do? Like how am I going to get through that? You know what? Let God focus you. He's going to address things one thing at a time. Hallelujah. Right? God is a faithful and good and loving God. He's going to get you there. We're on a journey together. That's why we want connect groups so we can be a family to support each other, right? That's why we want to disciple one another. So we can lift each other up. Because guess what? Sometimes when we fall, we need a hand. And we don't have the strength to lift ourselves up. Yes, Lord. I've been there. I've been where I can't pray. The only thing I can basically garble out is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And even that may not be really um, um, discernible. Mm -hmm. But in those times of my life, I have had deep people that have lifted me up. And they prayed those prayers that I could not even form. And they stood with me, and they prayed with me, and I got through. Amen. God wants to do that for you. Amen. And let God renew your mind. Because there's so many things in our mind that we think the wrong ways. God wants to change our minds. Our battle is in the mind. He wants to renew our mind. He doesn't, we've got to stop thinking the same way we 
th been thinking for the last 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years. And we've got to get God's mindset. Amen? Amen. Next one. But with all that, let's remember that we are beings, not doings. We are human beings, not human doings. Everything starts from rest. It's why we preach on grace all the time. It's why we talk about get, 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 understand the love of God. Because we cannot pour out what we have not received. Amen. So our first thing is to receive. Because if an empty pot, <laughs> there ain't nothing left to give, it, right? Some of us are pouring and we've got like drips, like dripping. Because we have nothing left. Let God fill that up. Amen. And then it will overflow Amen. to everywhere around you. And there will be rivers like we sang about this morning, <laughs> rivers of life, Hallelujah. joy, Amen. right? Joy, abundant, rivers of life flowing from the well that's within us, right? So with all our plans and our resolutions, let's not forget to just sit at the feet of Jesus. We're all little children. Like I've told you before, right? Amen. And we get so active doing, and there's things that we should do, right? And there's things, we're going to talk a lot about those things and what we want to do next week. But I want to prepare your hearts. But we do that out of rest. We do that from the feet of Jesus. Like a little child. You ever seen a little kid, they kneel in front of you? Right? They kneel to receive. They sit down and they say, Abba, Father. Yes, Lord. Let's learn to be little children. Amen. Reach up to your daddy Amen. from a seated position. Let him do the work. Let him work in you. Let him do your battles. Thank you. Let him focus your eyes. Use his glasses, not your own. But to do that, we sit in his feet. Amen. And we receive. And we receive. Next one. Philippians 3, 13 through 14 says, I don't depend on my own strength, so I was just talking about, right? To accomplish this. We can't depend on ourselves. However, I do have one compelling focus. Did y'all hear that? Focus. I forget all the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. I really want you guys to get that. I have one Compelling focus. Forget all of the past. Whether it's a good year or a bad year, forget it. Whatever those things in your life that have been a challenge that have tripped you up time after time after time, leave it in the past. And fasten your heart to the future. Don't leave your heart in the past. Fasten your heart to the future. Fasten your heart to God. He will bring you forward. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. Because God wants to pour out an anointing upon us that has never been seen in all of history. God has said that we will do greater things than him. Last I checked, Jesus raised people from the dead. Last I checked, blind eyes were opened, deaf were healed, right? Lame men walked. God wants to move mildly. He wants to anoint us together as a group and individually. But we must keep our focus and our gaze on Jesus so that our eyes have his glasses, so that we're not stumbling around in the dark trying to figure out what the shapes in our life are, but that we follow him. And he will keep us straight. Next one. Next one, and seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. It's Matthew 6, 33. If we get the first things first, you put Jesus first in your life, I guarantee you that everything else will follow. Hallelujah. We put everything else in front of God. We put laundry in front of God. We put our work in front of God. We put relationships in front of God. But if we put Jesus first and we focus our eyes on him, everything else 
will fall into place. Amen. If you make one thing this year, focus your eyes on Jesus Amen. and everything else will fall into place. Amen. So above all, constantly chase after the realm of God's kingdom. I look at constantly chase after the realm of God's kingdom. We want God's kingdom here on earth, right? Not just in heaven. We want to see part of God's kingdom here, right? And the righteousness that proceeds from him. Did you get that? Where's the righteousness from? Yes. From him, right? It's not ours. That's why we preach that so strongly. Because if we get all caught up in trying to be our righteousness, that just means right standing with God, we are going to fall flat on our faces. But if we let him be our righteousness. Then we'll proceed with that. Then all these, I like it, less important things will be given to you abundantly. Amen? Amen. Next slide. Uh oh, what happened? <laughs> Go back. Did it just die on me? Get something. Did it just hold it? Is it a button? Ah! It died on me! Alright, so I'm done anyway, pretty much. If you can get it back up and running, there is one video I'd love to show at the end, but if not, that's okay. If you hit, hit OK and see what will happen. <laughs> it's December 29, that one. Yep, there you go. Because he's doing that. Let's keep focus, even when crazy things happen, right? Mistakes happen. Technical difficulties happen, right? How many people have technical difficulties in their life? <laughs> you ever been so because you're, you're on track, you're on your way, you're ready to do a thing, and then <laughs> something happens, right? And we get all locked down. Actually, if you go down to right here, I'm going to skip that one. If you go down to here, give me a second. Um, um, if you hit presentate, no, hit, go back, slideshow, presenter view, there you go. And that'll go away in a second. Um, when those technical difficulties come, if we can keep our eyes on Jesus and not get distracted, mm -hmm. folks, mm -hmm. not get distracted, mm -hmm. God will come in like a flood. Mm -hmm. And this next, um, there we go. I just want to end with this video. This is us this year. Uh, sound, Ethan?
We cheer at football games, right? Yeah. Right? We cheer at baseball <laughs> games, right? Soccer, whatever your sport. Yeah. You don't do that, you cheer at like your kids' performance, right? Yeah. yeah. I want to cheer for God and I want to declare some things. Amen? Amen. I want to declare some things because I believe there is power in the words that we speak forth. And instead of speaking forth negativity, we are going to speak positivity. Oh, amen. 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 So we're going to say, this is my year on the count of three. You ready? Yeah. One, two, three. This, this is my year! God will be with me. Ready? Yes. One, two, three. God will be with me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, one more. You ready? Mm -hmm. No matter what comes. Mm. Ready? One, two, three. No, no matter, matter what, what comes. comes. And something Taylor said. Ready? I will still praise him. Yes, Lord. Okay. Ready? I will still praise him. Alright, the last one. You ready? The very last one. I will keep my eyes on Jesus. Hallelujah. Ready? One, two, three. I, I will, will keep, keep my eyes on Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Woo. in the faith and the boldness. So when things come against you, don't declare bad things. Oh. Declare the good things of the oh, Lord. Yeah. Declare the things that God has said. Declare the things that are unseen, not the things that are seen. Hallelujah. Call forth the things that are not seen. Amen. Because God wants to reward us. 